Hi everyone, this is Perik from P2Design. In this video, I will show you how to create a drawbridge mechanism. Believe it or not, it's not that simple to create. Together, we will create the chain, then we will deform it using a curve, and finally, we will create a proper rig so that the door rotation will make both the pulley and the chain move appropriately. The first thing we are going to do is to create our chain. As an origin point, I will use this hook on the bridge. So I will select this loop, press Shift S and snap the cursor to select it. From there, I will get back into object mode, press Shift A and add a mesh torus. I will then set both segments values to 6. From there, still in object mode, I will press R to rotate, Z to rotate along the Z axis by 30 degrees. From there, I will press tab to enter edit mode and I will scale my object down so that it fits the size of my bridge hook. I will then press Alt Z to enable the X-ray mode that will allow me to select through the mesh and I will select all the upper points and offset them a bit along the Y axis. Then I will select the whole mesh, press Shift D and Y to move it along the Y axis and then I will rotate them by 90 degrees along the Y axis too. Then you can tweak the position. From there, we can add an array modifier to generate more rings to our chain. We don't want the chain to be offset along its X axis. We want it to offset along its Y axis, so I will start with a value of 1 and then I will tweak the value. The idea is to get the chain rings to be bound one to the other. Once you're happy with the result, you can increase the count number to the desired value. I will start with a value around 15 and I will then give my chain the same material as the metal on the bridge. I will now add the curves that will allow us to deform our chain. It's super important that both object origin are perfectly aligned. The object will be generated at the 3D cursor. So the first thing you may do is select your chain, press Shift S, cursor to select it, and then add the curve. Now I want to align the curve with the chain and I want to make sure that this point, the root of the curve, is aligned with its origin. So I will first select all the controller points of the curve, switch to 3D cursor and rotate them on the z-axis by 90 degrees. Then I will press S and X to scale along the x-axis by 0. Finally, I will select my first control point and press Shift S, selection to cursor. I can now move the second controller point away. It doesn't matter if it's not perfectly aligned with the chain. The important point is the very first controller point. I'm now going back into object mode. I will first select the chain, then the curve and press Ctrl P and choose Curve Deform. We want our object to be deformed along its Y axis and from there we are good to go. If I go back on the curve enter edit mode, I can deform the curve using the controller point and our chain will follow. What I did is that I selected the first control point and press S to scale and zero to get rid of its handles because we want it to be straight. From there you can select the second controller and you can extrude more controller points. To do so just press E to extrude and move the newly created controller point toward the pulley. Now what I advise you to wrap the curve around the pulley is to use as less point as possible because we will have to constrain each point later on. And this could be a bit tedious. I don't know if it's the best method but I haven't found any other way. To make a circle with the curve you only need two points. Just extrude it, rotate it by 180 degree and move it on the other side. I will then extrude more points the same way and offset them a bit along the length of the pulley. You can create more controller point or less controller point, it's up to you and your model. And once I'm done with the curve, I will adjust the number of copies 
of the array so that it just starts to wrap around the pulley. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code P2Design to get 10% off on any of the courses. It's time for us to create our rig. I also want it to be aligned with our chain, so I will make sure that I snap the 3D cursor to the chain first, and then I will add an armature single bone. I like to be able to identify my bone clearly, so in the armature viewport option, I will enable bone names and axis. I've pressed tab to enter edit mode and I will press F2 to rename the bone and call it root. I also would like the root bone to be aligned with world space, so I will select the tip of the bone, press shift S and snap it to the 3D cursor. Once it is snapped, I will press G and Y to move the tip of the bone along the Y axis and now it's aligned with world space. You can change the bone axis display position in the viewport display options. From there, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. We need to create one bone per controller point on our curve. One last thing I will do is switch the viewport display option of the armature object to wire so that we can see through and set it to in front. Now in edit mode on the armature, I will press shift D and scale down the bone. I will switch to individual origins so that I can scale it toward its head. I will press F2 to rename the bone and call it bone 01. Now I will tab out in object mode. I will select the chain, then the curve, then the armature and press Ctrl tab to enter pose mode and press Ctrl P and choose bone. This way, both the chain and the curve are parented to bone 1. If you have a hard time selecting the right bone, you can press Alt, Shift and left click and it will open you the select menu where you have all the overlapping bone and you can easily select bone 1. From there, we simply need to create a new bone per controller on our curve. So I will go back into object mode, I will select the chain and hide it and then I will select the armature and the curve and press slash to enter local mode. From there, I will select a bone 1 in edit mode and I will duplicate it by pressing shift D. I will then open the snapping menu and choose vertex. This way, if I select the bone, move it holding control, it will snap on any vertex or controller point of our curve. And I can then rename the bone, calling it bone 2. I will press shift D move it holding control and I will repeat this. I will make those two bones a little smaller and continue on snapping them, duplicating them, snapping them, etc. Don't forget to rename them. I've simply renamed them bone 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. From there, I will press the slash key again to exit local view mode and alt H to unhide my chain. I will then select my curve and enter edit mode. The idea is to assign a hook modifier per bone so that we can use the bone to manipulate the controllers of the curve. So I will open the modifiers tab and add a new modifier, hook modifier. As a target object, I will source my armature as a target bone, the bone number two. Now you need to make sure that the controller point of your curve is selected and then click assign. From there, the hook modifier will be assigned to this controller point and to the target bone. And as I move the target bone, it deforms the curve and so it deforms the chain. I will repeat the process with all the bones. I will duplicate the current hook modifier, go into edit mode on the curve, select the controller point, choose the proper bone and click assign. I will repeat the process for each controller point and each associated bone. If you have properly set all the hook modifier, you can go into pose mode onto the armature, select bone 1 and simply move it. As you get closer to the pulley, the chain will roll around it. 
We now have to simply rig the door and rig the pulley and we are good. The first thing I need to define is the rotation point of the door. So I will select the door, enter edit mode and then press slash to enter local view mode. I will select the two triangular faces at the base of the door and press shift s to snap the cursor to this. I will press slash to exit local view mode, select my armature, press tab to enter edit mode and press shift a. It will automatically add a new bone. From there I will press shift s to snap the tip of the bone to the 3D cursor and then press G and Y to move it along the door. I will then go back into object mode, select the door, select back the armature, press Ctrl tab to enter pose mode, Ctrl P and choose bone to parent the door to the bone. Now the door follow any motion I will give to this bone. Since I just want to use one axis rotation, I will press Ctrl R and set the rotation mode of the bone to XYZ Euler. From there, I can go in the transform option of the bones and lock every transform channels but the X rotation. Now, whether I press R or G, the door will only rotate around the X axis. So from there, we can go into edit mode, select our bone number one, and then select the door bone and press Ctrl P to parent bone one to the door bone. And now our mechanism starts to work. There is a little issue. As we reach a certain threshold, we can see the chain twisting around the curve. And this is because bone one is rotated. And since the chain and the curve are child of this bone, they are rotated too. And it creates a small bug with the deformation modifier. To fix this, we will go back onto our armature in edit mode and we will extrude a new bone from the head of bone 1 by pressing E and then Z. I will rename this new bone MCH for mechanism bone 1. I will now select bone 1 and I will then select our root bone and I will parent bone 1 to the root bone. Then I will select the mechanism bone, then the door bone, and I will parent the mechanism bone to the door bone. Now we will constrain bone 1 with MCH bone 1. I will go into pose mode, select MCH bone 1, then shift select bone 1 and press Ctrl Shift C and add a copy location constraint. From there, as we move the MCH bone, bone 1 follow its position, but if we rotate it, nothing's happened. And so if we move the door, it will follow the location of MCH bone, but it won't rotate anymore. Hence, we got rid of the twisting issue. I can now rig the pulley, so I will select the pulley object, enter edit mode to snap the 3D cursor to the center of rotation of the pulley by selecting both extremity and snapping the cursor. I will then go back into object mode, select my armature, enter edit mode, duplicate the door bone and snap it onto the 3D cursor. Still in edit mode, I will scale it a bit down and I will rename it pulley. Now I want to drive the rotation of the pulley with the rotation of the door. So I will select the door bone in pose mode and I will right click on its X rotation and choose copy as new driver. Still in pose mode, I will then select my pulley bone, right click on its X rotation and choose paste driver. It will automatically create a driver with the right setup. As I rotate the door, the pulley bone rotates. I will now go back into object mode, select the pulley object, then the pulley bone, enter pose mode, select the pulley bone, press Ctrl P, bone to parent the pulley to the current bone. I don't know why it got slightly offset during the parenting, but I will simply move a bit the object inward. Now, as I rotate the door bone, the pulley will rotate too, but not at the correct speed. To fix this, I will select the pulley bone and right click on the driver and choose edit driver. From there, we want to change the driver type from average value to scripted expression. Don't worry, nothing complicated here. As a scripted expression, we will use the current variable and multiply it by a number. 
I will first try with a value of 5 and then test the rig. The pulley now rotates 5 times faster, but it is still not enough. So I've made several tests at 10, 12, 15, and I just checked that I don't have the feeling that the chain is sliding on the pulley. And in the end, I got a convincing result with a value of 15. From there, depending on your model, you can add a mirror modifier and mirror the chain and the pulley object. If you have followed all the steps, you should have a drawbridge done. I did add an extra controller to be able to bend a bit the chain and make it wobble whenever the door is falling, but it's a bit more complex and will make this tutorial a bit too long. This is the end of this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.